go for a quick spirited drive guys cars and chris checking in with you we won't do no music so we don't get copyrighted Focusing on the traffic, making sure that you're gonna cross. You got it, brother. to discuss why the Benz wasn't the best fit um, for me or overall um, the overall build quality sometimes lacked in certain areas and then it just wasn't you know you would hear a lot of squeaks and rattles especially in that center console area just wasn't as solid as it should have been for I guess when the car was new an 85 86 thousand dollar car um, then you have other things that I experience like the transmission the transmission always always when you needed it to put down power it didn't um, there were several times when I let my wife take it out and she's calling me like she doesn't feel comfortable driving it and you know I feel the same way while driving it um, especially when you get into situations where you know you want to put the power down or you're jumping out the traffic and you're worried about getting smacked by oncoming traffic because you're jumping out in a moment where you think you have enough power and your car is going to respond properly, right? You think, okay, I got it. I'm good. And then you need the car to respond. And it's like, uh -uh, not responding. You're on your own. Figure it out. So that was a big, big, big reason why the Benz just wasn't for me. It just wasn't the car for me. That 9 MCT. Oh, they closed it. Um, that 9 MCT. How, you know, once you got going, snappy, fires off, shifts, things like that. But if you get into a stop and go situation and you need it during a stop and go, you come to a stop sign, you need to get back on it. Of course, you know, you got paddles. So most of the time, sometimes, you know, after learning the car and what it may or may not do, I learned to use the paddles. But who wants to use the paddles all the time? The car should function normally with or without the paddles. I mean, it sounds like a first world problem, but it's something that I think they should have worked out. Um, granted, I bought it as used, but you know, I've seen a lot of reviewers talk about it on uh, the newer Benzes that they're driving, calling it Herky Jerky, um, and saying, you know, that that's just the product of the transmission. For me, I've owned several cars that had dual clutch transmissions, the, my S4, my S6. They weren't herky jerky in traffic. I drove them hard. Um, this car was just, it, it, just all the time. If you stopped, if you came to a quick stop, like we were approaching the light right now, the light turned green immediately. As soon as I got here and I pressed the gas, the car would not move for a good 
maybe half a second, second and a half, somewhere in between there, and then all of a sudden, surge of speed. So that also can be dangerous, you know? And um, I took it to the dealer several times to get it looked at. Uh, they said it was normal. Um, also another issue I had with it when I purchased it was the brake squeal out the box. You know, um, took it to Mercedes-Benz uh, Westchester, shout out to them. Um, they looked over the car and they said, you know, Mr. Stevens, Cars and Chris, whatever you want to call me, that's that's pretty normal for uh, AMGs, especially you know with the type of brake pad it has on there. That metal is it just it just squeaks. Now, granted, I know performance cars squeak, but there was something they could have done about it. I've read on the forums, I did the things they asked me to do, like back up, then go really fast, then slow really fast, then step on the brakes, and and you know try to dust knock some of the dust off. However. It just continued to squeal it, it, to the point where it got so bad that I eventually had to put um, had to put new brake pads on the car because I just was that tired of the squealing and that was aftermarket pads and that worked it quelled the squealing um, the other issue for me was the infotainment system like you can see this screen is full Apple CarPlay and it's full it takes up the full real estate of the screen that did not um mbux you know the glc has a smaller screen i'll put a picture in the video for you but then on top of the smaller screen on the interior apple carplay takes up an eighth of the screen uh seven eighths of the screen like and like there's still real estate left and it's like why are we not using the full screen why can i have it full screen and if i'm using maps i would like to see it larger like we're looking at right now while we're on kelly drive in philly i would love to see it that way but it just wasn't there. Like I said, 85 to 90 percent of that car was good. It's just the small things that affect the overall ownership experience. At least for me, I'm talking just for me. It that affected my overall ownership experience, where I was just like, you know what? Um, it's time. It's time. My wife was like, uh, you you kept that car for a while, so I know you're probably itching for a new one and i'm like no not really you know she was like i know you go ahead do what you need to do get you a new car you're not happy you don't drive it like most of the time it just sets still i didn't want to go nowhere in it um unless we really had to go somewhere you know concerns about safety is big for me and response and like i, I buy car powerful cars because i need that assurity um when I'm entering a highway or a roadway or, you know, like that, whoever's in the car with me is going to be safe. I like fast cars, but I want to also know they're going to be safe when I step on it. I don't have to think about what the car is going to do, if it's going to respond. And then also, um, am I keeping them alive? The other issue that I had with the car, <laughs> as, even though I said it was outside my room, was the paint color. Red was just too dang on loud for me. I tried to get over it. I liked that, you know, I had a matching color with my significant other. Um, but ultimately, the red was just, it's just too loud. And, and um, I know my interior is red, but the exterior was just too loud. I like the red seats. The red seats makes this car pop. Um, but the exterior being red just, just it just got to me. Um, overall, that's the only issues I had with the GLC 63 AMG um, like I said that engine uh, that engine that V8 4 liter twin turbo V8 is chef's kiss it, that that's what makes the car that's what saves it um, the last concern I had for my ownership experience was worrying about the air suspension eventually going because um, we were at 35,000 miles and I've been reading reports that they they typically top out at 50 60 no one wants to play pay for air suspension and a replacement of air suspension. So um, that was another concern I had. But overall, she was a great car. But what drew me back to this, the BMW M3, is just a phenomenal driving car. It is the best driving car I've driven in a very long time. I've, I've driven one, no, I've driven two Panameras. 
I've never driven a, driven a 911, so all you 911 fanboys, you know, leave it in the comments. But for me, I've had um, an Infiniti G37 coupe, an Infiniti G37 S sedan, six speed. I've had a B8 S4, B8 and a half S4. I've had a C7 and a half S6. I've had a CTSV coupe, uh, second gen. Um, I've also had an Infiniti Q50. I've had, what was after the Q50? Well, that was the S6, okay. So then after the S6, I went B9 S4. After the S4, I had a Dodge Charger Hellcat, 2018 Hellcat. After the Hellcat, I had a 2020 um, F87, F97, I'm sorry, X3M competition. After the X3M competition, you guys see, that's when I started my channel, I got the G80. 2021 rear wheel drive competition after the 2021 comp i got the durango hellcat now that's another car that i missed dearly um but after the durango hellcat i was i stepped into the tesla model y performance great car um but nothing and i mean nothing drives like this the glc 63 amg again a nice car but nothing and i repeat nothing drives like this the all-wheel drive the x drive on this one just adds to um my liking y'all see that I almost got hit because uh, people don't know how to take the curves coming around the parkway um, but luckily you know i'm prepared for people to do the things that they do um, and always watching especially when they look or they got a car full of tent so um Speaking of tent, leave in the comments if you think I should tent this. Like, I really think um, the red interior should be seen by most, if not everybody, that's looking at the car. Uh, that's one of the mods I'm considering. Um, I read the comments about the spacers. They're on order. Um, thinking about lowering it just a little bit. Uh, we'll do a walk around. Uh, when I get to the gas station because I'm in need of some gas. I don't like going below half a tank during break-in. That's just my preference, but you know, I'm in need of some gas, so I'll get some soon. Um, yeah, on the tent, lower, of course an exhaust. I live, we live, I live near, uh, what's that called, AWE. I live near AWE, so I'm thinking about getting one of their exhausts. I'm gonna check that out and see. There's definitely some mods coming. I may even do a power adder, which I've never done on any car that I own, but I am considering it heavily to add some power, especially with a downpipe and tune. People are making seven, 800 horsepower on these things. That is really, really, really tempting for me. And um, to get out there with seven to 800 horsepower and be back near the Hellcat level, especially with all wheel drive, wow, that'll be great. Um, so yeah, leave some comments. Let me know. As always, I'm going to ask you guys to subscribe, like, and share.